Hey everyone, it's John from Direct Pro Audio, and I'm here with my favorite Cat5 termination tool. As you can see, this pipe wrench can really get down there and make those close, tiny connections. It works really well, especially when you're working in tight spaces. This comes in real handy. No, I'm kidding. We don't use a pipe wrench when we're terminating Cat5, but I'd like to talk today a little bit about what we do in the audio and video world when it comes to Cat5 and why we need to know as technicians how to properly make male RJ45 Cat5 ends. In the world of IT, most technicians are using this, the punch down tool, to make their terminations into keystone jacks and things like that. And then they use a short pre-made patch cable to make the final connection into the, into the device. And that's great in the IT world, but in the audio video world, when we're dealing with tight spaces and, and uh, needing to make really solid connections, you do need to learn how to make an RJ45 end with a crimp tool because those tight spaces you're working in and the lack of the, and not wanting to have to use a separate patch cable to make that final connection is really advantageous. I think it's kind of a dying art. A lot of technicians aren't experienced with making RJ45 male ends because it is it does take practice. It takes a lot of practice. I've been terminating these ends for over 10 years. And I don't make mistakes very much anymore, but sometimes, occasionally, when I test out that cable, I'll still have to redo it because something wasn't quite right. When it comes to these connections, you got to do it exactly right every time, and you got to test it. Because if you don't do it right, you'll run into all sorts of problems that are not fun to try to fix. So I'm going to show you how I do it, the tools I use, and uh, hopefully it can be pretty instructional to you and you know, as an audio video installer. Uh, because you need to know these things. In the audio video world, you're not soldering very much anymore, and most of what we're doing has computer networking involved in some way, whether it's um, con control of the device or setting it up. Uh, most of the digital products that we're using now, the digital system processors, use Ethernet to connect to it as opposed to a serial device or something like that. So you got to know how to get in and out of these devices. Also, we use a lot of uh, audio and video balance anymore, where we can send HDMI or analog video, analog audio, long distances over Cat5. Now that's not necessarily a network switched IP sort of situation, but you're still terminating Cat5 ends, and you've got to know how to do that if you're going to be a full-fledged, uh, robust audio video installer. So here's how I make them. Alright, so the first step in terminating a good Cat5 end, RJ45, is having the right ends. Now these, what I use are Allentel products. Um, the model number is AT8X8, and I buy them by the 50 pack from Graybar. You can get them from a lot of different places online, but uh, that's where we pick them up locally. And it's really important having these ends. You can get Radio Shack ends or ends from Home Depot or Menards or something like that that are an off brand, but it really, really helps to have the good Allentel um, ends. It'll make your life a lot easier. And they're a little bit more expensive, but if you buy them in bulk, it's, it's, uh, it makes sense and it's worth it. It'll make your life a lot easier. What I have here is just some, some uh, basic scrap Cat5. Uh, I believe this is Cat5e. Nothing special. Um, you know, we buy this Cat5. You can get this at Menards for about seventy, eighty dollars, or a thousand as of today. Um, you know, it's this stuff is really cheap to buy. It's easy to install, and uh, it works really well. Um, so. Um, Good Cat5 is, is easy to come by and it's relatively cheap. And uh, once you get experience, it's it's pretty easy to terminate. So let me show you what we have. Um, we got the Cat5. I've got my ideal uh, crimper. You can see that's had a lot of use over the course of many years. It's uh, crimped a lot of ends. Um, I've had this for probably seven or eight years. Um, still works great. Um, this is my go-to guy. I got a basic uh, you know wire stripper cutter tool. This is uh, ideal as well. Um, I got a cheap wire, Cat5 wire stripper. This actually came with a Balin set from Intellix, um, and this works really well. Um, you can also use it as a punch down tool, um, but I never use that. I use this guy if I ever have to punch anything down. Got my pipe wrench, just in case, and uh, I got my Allen Tell ends. So um, let me show you how I do this. First thing I do is I cut off the clean, clean cut right there. And I strip back, oh, about an inch, inch and a half, and just uh, use the wire um, stripper here to just one pass around. We'll get this to come off real easily. And as you can see, um, there's little 
uh, cable string relief here that I'm going to cut off just so it's not in the way. And I have my wires exposed. So, the key is getting the right color coding in the right order. Now, you got to be familiar with exactly how these work. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten all these wires out. And I use the T865B standard uh, termination color coding, which goes white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, and white brown, brown. Now that's something I've memorized over the years, and you're probably not going to remember that, but uh, I'll put it in the video description and you can Google that and find any anywhere online. Now there's another standard that's the A standard, T865A, some of you might use that, but I use the B standard, and the key is using the same one on both ends. So, as you can see, I line up my uh, pins here. I have white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. So what I do is I straighten all those twists out and I start working. Now I grab right down here at the base uh, and make sure if you can see that, that all the wires are coming out of the case here kind of in the order that they're going to go so we're not twisting around and, and uh, going every which way. And I just start straightening these out and I start working them into a nice line here. And especially good wire, good wire will line up for you. You gotta have to kind of hold it tight there at the base. And on this one, I got a little twist here that I want to get rid of on this first pair. You gotta work it. And make sure our pairs are on the right order here. Green got switched around here. Get my blues back in the order. You'll notice the blue, every one goes, uh, you know, every other color except for the blue, the blue is twisted, so the blue is opposite of what the other colors are, but it still does go every other color. There's no solids next to solids or, stri or stripes next to stripes. Work this down here. Okay, and once you're in a good place here, as you can see, here's a close-up how my wires are. They're all lined up there. They're ready to be cut. Now I always double-check. White, orange, orange. White, green, blue. White, blue, green. White, brown, brown. So after you cut this, it's going to be real hard to rearrange these. You're going to have to redo it. And I always make sure I have my connector that I'm going to terminate out of the bag ready to go. Because the last thing you want to be doing after you cut this is fumble around in a bag trying to find your connector. So I'm going to hold this here and I'm going to cut it off, this excess. Okay, I want a nice clean cut there. And right away we want to get this into the connector. And push it up in there. So now that's what we look like. You can notice that the blue outside case is within and underneath that little notch that's going to go down and be the strain relief. And you want to make sure that your case isn't outside of here or it's not too far up. It's got to be right there. So you can kind of see if you look around. You can see from the sides, the pins are go or the cables are going all the way up there to the end where it's going to crimp down. So now I take my crimp tool, put it in there firmly, crimp it down, and you got a good connection. Okay. And go ahead and I always double check my pin layout. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Okay, so I'll do the other end here so we can make a, a nice little patch cable here. Might come in handy. I'll show this to you again. Make a nice clean cut. Take an inch, inch and a half off of the outside case. Whee! Okay, cut off my little strain relief. Uh, Whatever that is. Now at this point, I always kind of organize my uh, my wires here so that they're in the right order: the white, the orange, blue, green, brown, and I start untwisting them. Start lining them up. Memorize it: white, orange, orange, white, green, blue. 
white blue green white brown brown once you make about a thousand of them you'll remember and it's important to remember that you know it's good to make these cables right because you never know what's going to be traveling over these wires this could be a TV screen for 300 people 500 people this could be distributing audio for uh, important paging system this could be uh, you know setting up a control system that will uh, control how a system operates through a touchscreen or something so it's always good to remember the reason why you're doing these right and you're taking them time you're taking your time and doing them right the first time because man those oddball networking troubles or oddball things that happen with your cables or with your uh, your systems can almost always be traced back to bad connections and you don't want any bad connections because then you got to go back out to your client site you got to take that phone call and that's never fun you don't want to take those phone calls so we got our pins lined up we got a white orange orange white green blue white blue green white brown brown all kind of work together okay get my connector up here so it's nice and handy okay Get a nice, clean, perpendicular cut across them. Stick it in, push it up. Double check your pin out. Both sides. Notice how the casing is going all the way in there with the spare your leaf. Looks good. Crimp it down, now we have a cable. Two ends, RJ45 male. Now this cable could be, you know, going into a wall and going 150 feet somewhere important, but that's how you make a cable. Now let's see how uh, good I did. Let me grab my cable tester here, double check my work. This is a progressive electronics model, and you can see the T568B standard there is on the right, so I'm going to plug the transmitter in one side, the receiver in the other. Turn it on. As you can see, it's going to go through all those pins and they're all green. Okay, so if you fail to make a connection, one of the lights wouldn't show up. Or if one of them was reversed, it would show up as red. And if it wasn't in the right order, they would jump around and not go in order. So, as you can see, that is a proper connection. Good cable. That'll last for years to come and provide good service to your customers. And uh, that's how we make a RJ45 male cable. Bam!